Hey everyone, welcome back. In this JavaScript tutorial, we are going to learn about the for loop in JavaScript. Now, for loop is also very important and we will be utilizing it or using it in the API test automation within Postman. So let's quickly understand the basics of for loop and then we'll move to the advanced for loop whenever we are going to write the API test. Okay. Uh, so the basic syntax basically when, why do we need for loop, right? So as the name itself loop, right? So for loop is a loop that will evaluate a particular condition. And until that condition is evaluated to false, the loop will continue. For example, okay. Say for example, there are the, there are some items in an array. W what are the real use cases? So you have an array, okay. And within an array, you want to iterate over or go through and check how many elements are there and print each of the element within the array or basically iterate through and see a particular value exist within the array. So in all those scenarios, you will be using the for loop, right? Now the syntax of the for loop is pretty simple. So basically for, right? So the keyword for, okay. And then there is a initial expression, okay? So I will say initial, initial expression, okay? And then the next is, um the the colons uh, semicolon and then the condition right so the condition will be evaluated next then semicolon the updated you know expression okay so, or final expression basically so what is the updated expression okay and then within the curly braces you write the program okay so you basically write the statements that need to be executed so this is the basic syntax, right? So initial expression, condition and update ex expression. All right. Now let's say I have, uh, I want to print something multiple times. Okay. Very simple. So say for example, I have a variable. Okay. So I say n and then that is five. Okay. Now in the initial expression, I just say for i and assign the value one. Okay. So for i, th this is another variable, okay? And then here you basically, I can, you know, say, or let i like this as well, or we just, we just remove it like this, okay? For i is equal to one. And if the condition, say for example, i, in the condition, I want to check if i is less than or equal to what? Less than or equal to n, n holds five, right? So until i is less than or equal to five, then what we are trying to do, we just increment that, okay? And then simply I want to print something on the console. Okay. So I'll say print or console.log RCV Academy. Okay. That's it. Now let's try to run this. Okay. So I'll open the console, clear it, and then send this request. So you'll see RCV Academy has been printed how many times? Five times. Okay. So this is how the for loop will work. Okay. I can also you know, define like this, I can say let uh, keyword as well to define this particular variable that doesn't make difference basically. So it will work exactly the same. Way. Okay. So now this is very simple for loop. Okay. Now what is the real use case? If for example, we want to iterate through. Okay. So we want to basically have initial expression check for the condition, right? So this is the initial expression. Okay. We have defined or we have defined a variable i and initially assigned a value to one. Then we are checking for a condition that i is actually until i is less than or equal to n. Okay. So what happens is when first time the execution starts, right? So uh, the value of i is one. Okay. Then in the first run, i is checked against the value of n, which is five. So one is less than or equal to five. Yes. Then what happens? It comes and prints you know, RCV Academy. Okay. And then increments. Okay. So basically I then becomes two. Okay. So initially I was one, then it became two. It printed, right? So it printed RCV Academy once. Then again, I is less than or equal to five. Yes. Okay. Again, print because the condition is still evaluated to true, then incremented to three. So this happens until this condition becomes false, right? When, when this I is incremented, say for example, I has become five. Okay. So five is equal to five. Yes. Okay. Then increment happens after five print statements, increment happens and the value of I becomes six. Then the condition is again evaluated. Six is less than or equal to five. No, this becomes false. 
and then the for loop is basically exi exited right so that's when basically based on this condition until this condition is evaluated to true the code block that is within the parenthesis within the curly braces will get executed until this is evaluated to true okay now what is the use case in the real uh, scenario say for example we have an array okay so let me comment this all right and say for example we have an array and it holds some of the numbers okay so say for example i say just numbers okay the the name and then within the square brackets i just add some numbers okay couple of numbers now if say for example i have to print all the values within this particular or whatever values are there within this array i want to print on the console right so for loop is a very ideal loop that we can basically use there are other loops and other methods as well to basically print these numbers but let's understand how we can do it with the for loop okay so now we have also understood about the length property of the array so which will give the length of the array or the number of elements that are there within the array okay so now we know that this number holds the array okay so if i say console dot log and just say num okay then it will print the whole array on the console all right so you'll see the whole array has been printed okay now if i say let's use the for loop okay so we want to iterate through or just go through this array and print each element that is con contained within the array okay so i'll say for i is equal to zero why zero because we know that within array the index starts from zero we have already understood that with in the array lecture right so index starts the, with zero so basically at the zeroth index this value first value will be there at the first index second value will be there right so for i is equal to zero okay and then until i is less than right less than the length right so un, until i is less than the length so how we will get the length of the array num dot length okay so you'll see that there is a property for the array okay this is the property which will get us the length of the array okay and then we'll increment i okay so we'll say i plus plus okay and then how we are going to get the values on the console we'll simply log the values right now in order to fetch the values we know that we have to provide the index okay of the value now we can simply say within the square bracket what will hold the index the i i will iterate from zero okay and num the dot length will have the length the total length the length of the array is 5 right so basically until i is less than 5 okay so then we iterate through so basically we just specify this i so if once the i is once the value of i is 0 so the first value okay so now the first value or basically the index i will be having 0 okay i will be 0 so that means the value at the first uh, 0th index will be displayed will be printed okay and then it will be incremented to one i will be incremented to one in the next iteration this value will be printed then it will be two this value will be printed then it will be three this value will be printed and then four this value will be eight eight will be printed right so in that particular case all the values will get printed okay so let's execute this open the console and see the results okay so you'll see two four six seven eight all the values have been printed okay now if we want to also just print the length okay so i just want to print the length of the array as well so we can understand it more clearly okay so you'll see first it will print the length which is basically five right and then the values two four six seven eight are the value now why we use this less than num dot length right because num dot length will give us the number of values within the array okay now because the index starts with zero so we have to make sure that we iterate one less than the actual number of items because it's starting from zero so one less than the number of items is equal to number of items in the array so that is why we use it less than the length right if we do it equal or basically less than or equal to okay then in that case there is no value that exists at index five right because zero one two three and four there is no value that is at index five so if you do like this you will see that it did execute 
but then at fifth index there is no value at all right so that is why it has displayed undefined in that particular case okay so this is basically the real usage and this is what or in the response api response there will be you know arrays we will we will might be required to fetch the contents of the array and then compare it so that is that is where we'll be using the for loops okay there are other loops as well and better approaches which we'll be learning but understanding all these basics is important because then you will be able to compare which one is the best one to use in a particular situation okay so that's all for this video i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching